Hello, gents. This is the second part of section 6.3. Still dealing with naming, but we're going to name acids and bases. Acids are a little more complex to name, so let's start with bases. They're fairly simple. Bases, something you need to know about bases is that they form hydroxide ions in solution. So when a base is dissolved in water, hydroxide ions form. We know hydroxide, if you remember, is OH minus. So those are parentheses, hydroxide is OH minus. Those are floating around in solution when a base is dissolved in water. Now when we name these, they're very similar to ionic compounds in that we name them as the metal and the hydroxide. So when we name them, it's metal plus hydroxide. An example of this would be if I have magnesium, magnesium as my metal, and hydroxide is my basic portion of that metal essentially, and it would be MgOH2. This came from, as you could imagine, Mg2 plus and OH1 minus coming together to form MgOH2. This is magnesium oxide. This is a base. So some compounds that we've already encountered are bases, especially the ones that have a hydroxide ion present in solution. Now, that's bases. Acids. Acids are a little more complex. Acids produce H plus ions when dissolved in H2O, when dissolved in water. So we have H plus ions. So hydrogen has one valence electron. It loses that valence electron in solution when we're talking about ion. I mean, it's talking about acids, excuse me. Acids can be thought of as molecules with one or more H plus ions attached to an anion. So an H plus attached to an anion. Sometimes you might have more than one H plus. This H plus has a specific name. We call it hydronium when it's H plus. But we'll talk about that more later on. Now, there are rules for naming acids. In the green here, it says rules for naming acids depend on whether the anion contains oxygen. So a lot of it's based on the anion, not even the H plus. H plus is simply H plus but the anion will dictate how we name it. So, the first rule. If the anion does not contain oxygen, then the acid is named with the prefix hydro and the suffix ic, as in I-C, attached to the root of the element that we're dealing with. For example, HCl. That's an acid. We know it's hydrochloric acid. This is why. It does not contain, my anion is chlorine, Cl or chloride, Cl minus. It does not contain oxygen. So when hydrochloric acid is dissolved in water, we get an H plus ion and a Cl minus ion floating around in solution, just like you would an ionic compound dissolved into water. So we have H plus ions being generated in acids. We name this hydro. There's no oxygen in the anion. The root of my element, chlorine, and IC as my suffix, hydrochloric, and we state that it is an acid. Now, next example, H2S. When we dissolve this in water, we have hydrogen ions. And we have sulfide ions. Notice I just uncrossed this formula. When we do so, or as an acid, this is called the same thing. We don't have any oxygens in my anion, so we call it hydrosulfuric. acid. So hydro is sulfuric acid. Now, that is if I do not have oxygen present in my anions. 
If I do have oxygen present, it's a little different. My second rule. If I do have oxygen is present, then the acid is formed from the root name of the central element of the anion or the anion name with the suffix of ik or us. And when anion and when the anion name ends in eight, the suffix is ik. When the anion name ends in it, the suffix is us. So let's do some examples. We have H2SO4 here. Now we have an oxygen, so we're going to use this second naming method here. <clears throat> now, my anion is SO4. We know that SO4 is sulf sulfate, excuse me, 2 minus. This is sulfate. An ATE ending means we use an IC suffix. So we call this, we use the root of our anion, of the central element of our anion. Central element is S, sulfur. So we use the root of it, sulfur. Ick, because we have an ATE ending, sulfuric acid. No hydros needed because we have oxygens present. My next one. My anion is NO3 minus. We know what that is. That's nitrate. If you're unsure of your anion, you can always uncross this formula. The 2 goes up there, SO2 minus. 1, 1. NO3 minus nitrate, it's ATE, thus we're going to have an IC ending, ick. So this is going to be nitric acid. It's ni because of the root nitrogen, nitric acid. You'll get the hang of this naming, it takes a while to get used to. Now we have H2SO3. If we look at this polyatomic ion, or this anion, excuse me, it's going to be SO3, 2 minus. SO3, 2 minus is sulfite. It's an ITE ending. ITE ending means we use the OUS suffix. So when I name this, it is sulfurous acid, which differs from sulfuric acid and the difference is in the number of oxygens which differs the, the, the name, the it versus eight. And lastly down here at the bottom, I'm running into the space here, but I have CLO. CLO, make sure I get this right, is hypochlorite. ITE. Hypochlorite, ITE, we use the us ending. So this will be hypochlorous acid. So those are your examples. We'll do more of these in class. Um, so just take notes on these. We'll come in class and we'll dig more, dig deeper into this. Enjoy, gents.